Joining me now is Kate Tulanko. She's the CEO of Corvus Health, a global health firm. Thank you, all, as always, for coming on the show. Thank you. And Kate, so Moderna, now the second drug maker applying for emergency approval, as we say, um, we believe it's going to happen, what, by December? Walk us through the steps of what else needs to happen before the public can actually sort of walk into a pharmacy and get their jab. So the first thing is that the FDA Commission has to look at the data that both Pfizer have provided and Moderna has provided and make a decision on whether or not the, the release will be uh, produced. I, my guess is that both of them will get their emergency releases. Uh, but for Pfizer, once again, it won't happen until December uh, 10th. Uh, for Moderna, not until uh, December 17th, and so we're really well into the holiday time. So what would need to happen then would be that the, both drug companies need to produce literally tens of millions of doses and get that system rolled out to actually get it to people. So I'm very skeptical that in the U.S. we'll see uh, more than 10 or 20,000 people diagnosed, uh, sorry, 10 or 20,000 people given the, the vaccination before the new year. And those will mainly be frontline health workers working in COVID wards. I think the UK might be a little bit different. They've set up a faster approval process. And so it looks like you might see your first people vaccinated in the UK by December 7th. Right, so you're thinking emergency workers in that first phase. So what about other members of the public? I think that will be quite a ways off. Uh, you know, your reporter mentioned issues of vaccine hesitancy. That won't be a problem for a while because in most countries, 50 to 60 percent of the population does want the vaccine and it will take months to get it out to them. Both issues of producing enough vaccine and then the logistics of getting these cold vaccines out into communities and getting people safely immunized. I think the big battle will be in the summer once, you know, 50 percent, 60 percent of the population has been vaccinated, trying to persuade the vaccine hesitant people to get the vaccine. I think we can do that in a number of ways. One is to show the evidence of how safe it's been you know, over the last six months in literally millions of people who will have received the vaccine by then, but also crafting emotional messages that they need to be heroes to, to help people, support health workers, uh, you know, help prevent uh, transmission in their community. So I think a combination of the new evidence from literally tens of millions of people safely getting the vaccine and these emotional messages will help persuade some of the vaccine hesitant people. Mm. Okay, we have three leading vaccines now in the late stages, all quite different in terms of cost, storage mechanism. Is one more promising than the other? And also, what's the ultimate goal? To have several vaccines all out on the market? Well, I think it is. That part of it's the strategy you don't put all your eggs in one basket, certainly not in an emergency situation. You wouldn't want it to have that on one vaccine that turns out not to work. And so the fact that, you know, there are over 50 vaccines in development right now is good. I, I think that was a smart decision. As far as which is going to prove to be the best, you know, we'll know that more in a few months. But right now it looks like Moderna's might be the best. It has 100 percent effectiveness in uh, preventing severe disease and 94% effectiveness in, in uh, reducing transmission of disease, that people don't get the disease at all. Uh, and also it has to be stored only at regular refrigerator or freezer temperatures, not the sub 80 that your reporter mentioned. And they've been looking at pricing it about $35 per person in high income countries and less in low income countries. So from a safety profile, effectiveness profile and cost, the Moderna vaccine is looking pretty good. Okay, very quickly, we have about half a minute left. We've just passed a big holiday weekend here in the U.S. And despite official pleas, many people did travel to celebrate for Thanksgiving. Uh, and now we head to another holiday season. How do we address pandemic fatigue? Well, we have two types of pandemic fatigue. Those of people who are tired of staying at home and those of health workers who really have been at full press for over 10 months and are now getting exhausted. I think for, for people, we need you know, strong leadership at the state and the national level to help people stay home, uh, help people social distance. And on the health worker side, we need to um, hire more health workers. We actually raise salaries for those on the front lines and really give them more physical and emotional supports. Mm, interesting points. Kate Tulanko, always good to speak with you. Thank you.